being nudged along by Paddy Garrity is a Benefit Knight. They're on from Surinaga and still continuing. Don't tell Mother, but well and truly detached. Would be 25 lengths behind the other four. Round Tom, and that's Rhythm. An awkward jump and landing from Surinaga back in fourth. Benefit Knight still there, the inside. Coming towards their next round, Tom in tight over that. Not a good jump. Might have lost a bit of momentum. Benefit Knight, the inside. That's Rhythm. Goes perfectly well on the outside for Paige Fuller. They've got three left to jump, and it's round Tom, and that's Rhythm. Over at the third last, lovely jump from the 13-year-old. That's Rhythm there. And now Paige Fuller just has to squeeze along, but would appear to be going better than round Tom, who doesn't always find much, and he's going to need to find something here. They're five lengths clear of in third benefit. Knight Surinaga will press for that position and will stay on up the straight. So it is, that's Rhythm, bidding to score at Bangor for the seventh time and a, a fourth time in Hunter Chases. Leads for Paige Fuller for trainer Sally Duckett coming towards the second last and has, has routed them surely if getting over the final two. It's That's Rhythm, jumps it really well by seven lengths. Now Surinaga has gone into second spot and does stay pretty well. He's trying to close in but has got an awful lot of work to do. Round Tom has, has stopped as if shot back in third place and coming to the last, it's That's Rhythm just has to jump it to secure victory and doesn't he jump it well under Paige Fuller with Surinaga six or seven lengths back in second spot without the time to close. She takes a look around, Paige Fuller. She won a ladies' open at Kingston Blount on this old boy last time up. Wins for the first time under rules on him here at Bangor. That's Rhythm. Takes it by all seven or eight to in second. Surinaga did stay on. In third will be a benefit night. Fourth at round Tom. And pulling up, don't tell mother. That's Rhythm wins the Hunter Chess at 85 to 40. Uh, at Bangor, and a pretty impressive win from that's rhythm as well. Uh, lands the hat trick, winner of a point to point last time out. Had won here the time before, and follows up that uh, win. Loves this track, got plenty of um, wins around here, and is now an eighth course success, for a seventh course success from eight starts here. Impressive stuff. Labrooks Mobile, proud sponsor of Racing UK. Game on! This is the presentation for uh, Her Highness Sheikha Fatima bint Mubarak Ladies World Championship, which was our previous race, Group 1 for the Arabian Breads at Newbury. The prize is being awarded by Lara Sawaya uh, for this race to the winning rider and Connections winning rider Marta Pesarek from Ireland. Right, back to Newbury for the 5.30, which is the Betfred, the Bonus King, Maiden Stakes. £5,175 to the winner of this seven furlong maiden. They go without number six, Sax uh, Saxon Soldier. Broadway Duchess is the 11-4 market leader. You're the boss at 100-30. Ed Walker and William Buick teaming up with that one. Uh, Takana at 7-2, to 8-1 to and bigger the rest. Let's get back to Newbury. Broadway Duchess then at the head of the market at 11 to 4 for the second division of the seven furlong maiden. We saw a 14 to 1 shot take the opening division for Alan Jarvis and Joseph O'Brien. Um, I'm not so sure this one is an easier puzzle to solve either, James. No, it's not. No, lots of horses that are difficult to be confident about. One peculiar jockey arrangement that must be commented on, which is why is Paul Hannigan riding Narmin and not Thakana? Thakana is shorter in the market, as you might expect, by in fact it's half the price, less than half the price. It's achieved a level of form good enough to give a good account of herself in this race, but he prefers the newcomer Narmin. He seems like who's got the same weight to carry. Um, it's a curious one, that. He's the only one that does prefer Narmin, but perhaps we'll find out that he was spot on and everybody else was wrong. We may do, or it may, I guess, simply be a case of them wanting to have their retained jockey on to just see what sort of feel the filly gives him. So whether she's an exercise worth persevering with. Yeah, the, the, the machinations of those great minds of the turf are beyond my comprehend, unfortunately. But I think you're absolutely spot on. Behind closed doors in racing, there's an awful lot of you're thought goes into it. Thought. It's not just the hapless randomness it appears. It doesn't, no, it doesn't fall together. No. It's a carefully crafted plan in yep. many cases. It's just that they don't always run according to plan. <laughs> <laughs> Seldom, in fact, yes. But the horse I like here is the, is the well back favourite. Not because it's well back, but because it's got the best speed figure, Broadway Duchess, which she achieved first up in one of those sales races. 
She was pretty well beaten behind Victrix Lou Doran, beaten ten and a half lengths last October, but she achieved a good standard of form. And I think that was a reliable effort, and on better ground, I think she'll give a better account of herself. She's by new approach. Broadway Duchess will be coming away from the right in stall two. Uh, we're getting through the loading process pretty swiftly here. My Renaissance is uh, still to go. Uh, be coming into stall 12 and last hooray into stall 10 and I think they will be uh, the final pair uh, to load up so with the last few getting set to slot in let's return to the commentary box and rejoin Richard thanks Stuart two left to go forward uh, last hooray and my renaissance who I think is having a blindfold fitted behind the stalls and he's getting a little bit on edge in danger of getting away there and uh, just wants to settle down. My Renaissance uh, a bit on toe with the blindfold fitted and just in danger for a moment or two of uh, escaping the clutches of the, the handlers, but uh, they've still got their man, just trying to persuade the horse that uh, he would like to go into the stalls. My Renaissance shunted towards them, goes in. So last hooray will be the last one for Division 2 of this Betfred, the Bonus King Maiden Stakes. And the 11 strong field are all loaded. That's it. And they're off to a reasonably level rate. Ganelli was the one who was a little slow. Patently rather jumped in the air. Landed a bit awkwardly and taken a while just to gather stride. So down the stand side, last hooray with Patently recovering that ground, largely due to the steady pace. My Renaissance uh, now wins towards the back. Ganelli showing signs of greenness is last of all. Out in the centre of the race course, the Kana shows up there from You're the Boss and the keen Broadway Duchess in the striped colours. Check it out in addictive nature. So now they settle down and they're three abreast for the lead. The Kana on the right with the black cap in the centre of the race course, patently in the grey colours, and then the blue and green of last hooray. Check it out, tracks them with Shady McCoy, My Renaissance and Narwin towards the stand side with Glenelli. The group of four over on the far side, still head by Thakana with You're the Boss, Broadway Duchess and Addictive Nature. So the three big guns in the market are all in that right-hand group as they head down with three furlongs to travel. Thakana with You're the Boss, yellow sleeves, patently being shaken up with Check It Out, asked for an effort, then Broadway Duchess. Shady McCoy is also being asked to improve. Glenelli, who showed signs of greenness early is now making eye catching headway into midfield so now they fan out a furlong and a half to go the Kana check it out pink cap with patently Broadway Duchess over on the far side is giving way you're the boss then Glenelli and also getting the hang of things Narwin is coming home strongly the Kana black cap the far side would check it out Narwin continues to stay on with Broadway Duchess check it out moves to the front inside the final hundred yards and it's check it out driven out to win check it out beat in the second the Kana Broadway Duchess was third Narwin promised in fourth from patently and Glenetti ran OK in sixth as well. Jim Crowley and Amanda Perrett teaming up for the latest of a series of big price winners at Newbury on Lockinge Day. 25 to 1, check it out, is off the mark at the second time of asking. Uh, check it out, who is a... A 58,000 guineas purchase related to several winners. He had shown a bit of promise when finishing fifth on debut in a seven furlong Goodwood Maiden. Uh, way well out of stall six, always to the four, um, in which most of the principles were handy from an early stage. The eventual run up for the Kana. Uh, Black Cap was out quickly under Ryan Moore. She was always prominent. Of those in behind that made ground from the rear, while well, the eventual fourth, Narmin, was the only significant closer from off the pace with a third Broadway Duchess having tracked the pace. Yep, that's uh, in, a, in a nutshell. Narming, who's the first Hamdan Colours, has got a most disconcerting way of going. I think she has some psychological related condition because she's a string halt like thing in the paddock she's a she's an awkward sight far left she is now and she has a splayed action with her front legs uh, but she's shown ability here albeit not finding much as much as expected in the last hundred yards or so now historically this hasn't been a bad race you've normally had to run to an average figure of around the low 90s to win this race maybe this isn't quite up to the normal level but I watched Check It Out on video um, yesterday, and he travelled really nicely on Goodwood debut, but then he flattened out 